Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a Kydex axe sheath using some pretty simple principles and stuff that you can find around your house or make for pretty cheap. Um, doesn't require a lot of tools, but it is something that you can use and does benefit you if you spend a lot of time in the outdoors, if you need sheaths, if you want to make your own type of things. Uh, I started COVID, I didn't have much to do, so I decided to go ahead and give myself a little something to work towards, and that was with Kydex. Now when it comes to Kydex, some of the things that you need to consider are when you get your types of material, I use a 0, 0.0 thickness. Um, I get my stuff from Amazon, it's not that expensive. It's about 28 bucks for about eight sheets, which is a pretty good deal for the amount of money I've made back on it. Now when you start cutting out your piece and you make sure you have a little bit more extra than you think you might need, it's better to have more instead of having less and then you're just gonna have to double it up and do it again. Now I suggest you buy a little oven like I have here. I got one from Goodwill for about eight bucks. It's better than using the one that you keep in your house. You don't have any uh, toxic gases, fumes, anything like that ingesting into your food. That's going to become a problem. Now set the oven to about 350 and leave that Kydex in there for about uh, three minutes total. I like to put it shiny side down. Um, you'll see the rough side of the Kydex will be up. For after about three minutes, you're going to see that it's pretty pliable um, as shown in the video here. Now you have some time to work with it, but you don't want to take too much time. What you're gonna do now is take some foam, which I have here, into my little press. I, I even used some uh, old recycled plywood and some door hinges I bought from Home Depot, I think. But you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna press that down. I clamped them down, once again, using some stuff I got from Home Depot. I like to put a heavy weight on top of my press, and I let that sit from anywhere for about 10 to about 15 minutes, just to give it that time to uh, actually form, and then you wanna give it some time to cool down. If you want to speed up that process, however, some things you guys can do is go ahead and run that Kydex under some cool water. And it just helps harden it a little bit quicker. As you can see here, I'm going to start opening the press. Sometimes it sticks, so be careful you don't rip it open. And then you got some of that foam, um, which then gets stuck to the actual Kydex itself. That becomes kind of a pain. You just want to make sure you don't have to deal with that. It formed pretty good. As you can see, there's a few lines on there from where the Kydex is a little bit long on the... Uh, the grill portion of the oven, if you will. But that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just start popping it off. It's got pretty solid form there, good definition. Uh, I'm making this for myself for, like I said, in, uh, in the field, I don't need super great definition. Now that being said, what I'm doing here is I'm tracing out a simple design that I wanna have on my sheath here. Um, once again, I'm, I need to allow room for the rivets and where I'm gonna be um, putting in some screws or whatever I want to use to, to close this up. I highly suggest that you guys get some sort of respirator. Once again, I'm using a Dremel here to help cut this out. Yeah, it does uh, cause plastic to bind together. It does cause smoke. That being said, I don't have a scroll saw um, and I don't do it by hand. This is pretty quick, pretty, pretty efficient. And with that respirator, it does help quite a bit. Um, however, I still suggest you have pretty good ventilation, um, whether you're doing that in your home or out in a garage, make sure that you are not in a closed up space. Now, once I get that cut out, I have my basic shape, my design. What I'm gonna start doing is using my little table uh, belt sander there. And I'm just gonna shape it up. Once again, I'm trying to clean it up as much as possible, giving that overall shape. The Dremel really helped cut it out. And then this sander is just assisting me with getting it as clean as possible. Um, what I try to do is I get that shape and then I hit the edges. It just really helps with the final process because I like to do some hand sanding at the end, going through some different grits. Um, but I'll show you that here in a little bit. After I'm done with this, the next thing that I'm going to do is start looking at where I want to set my rivets. Now I've jacked this up a lot of times. Um, what you need to do is look at the piece you're working with, so whether it's a knife, a gun, uh, an axe, whatever it is, and you need to see where that retention is most needed and Basically, make sure that you're not uh, closing it in to the point where you can't get it either into the sheath or out of the sheath. Um, that's happened to me before, and I'm actually going to show you here in a little bit. Um, unfortunately, I made a mistake of doing that in this video here. However, I'm going to go ahead and get my drill out. I use a quarter inch drill bit. I found that the quarter inch seems to work the best. I also use quarter inch uh, eyelets as well, and I've always had pretty good success with that. Some people will crack their eyelets or have issues with that, especially when it comes to the thickness. Um, however, I really haven't. I like to put down a little jig when I'm drilling these out just to make sure that I'm not going through my table or damaging anything. You also gotta be cautious too, if you're trying to just drill one side of the Kydex, you don't wanna go through the other, you don't wanna mar that up too much. 
Now, as you can see here, I have a little quarter inch burnishing tool. I just found it makes it look a lot cleaner and also helps seat the eyelets or screws when I am working with the Kydex. Um, what I'm gonna do after that now is I just take a bit of sandpaper and I work on the inside of it wherever there's folds um, on top of that as well as the holes there's going to be some of the fragments or pieces or bits that are going to be found from uh, uh, when you were drilling through that kydex. What I like to do now is I like to take a wooden dowel and I'll actually push through these holes once again making sure there's no debris or anything keeping um, this sheath from being as clean as possible. Um, there's a lot of times you'll find little tidbits of stuff that gets stuck in there. That's why I like to wash it out once I'm done. Now they think that I found my uh, last spot. I'm gonna go ahead and drill that last hole where I'm gonna put the eyelet in and go ahead and get ready to seat or get the, uh, the eyelet pieces ready so I can go ahead and start putting those in. Now I don't have a fancy press. Um, all I'm going to use is a hammer and do it by hand. This has been working for me pretty well for quite some time. I don't make a lot of sheets or holsters to the point where I can't dedicate time to doing it by hand. I know some people like to use presses and whatnot. Now I've had better success with using the flat side of the anvil and the eyelet setter seems to go in pretty well with it. I haven't had any major issues. But to seat it properly, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take an eyelet, you're gonna push it through, you're gonna set the back end onto the anvil itself, take the eyelet setter, set it in the center, and then you're gonna tap it in. Now I don't go crazy with this, I don't hammer it hard, I tap it about four or five times, see how it's sitting. If it looks good, I go ahead and I continue on. You just want to be cautious that you're not hitting it so hard that it smashes or starts to split apart. Because it just doesn't look good, um, doesn't sit flush and just looks kind of mangled, which can, can become a problem, especially if we're looking at the longevity of the, uh, the sheath here. Now here is where I jacked up. I wasn't too happy about this, took a little bit of time to do it, try and record this. Definitely embarrassing, but that being said, it's gonna to happen to you, especially when you're first starting out or even after a year of doing it. There's times where you think something looks good, you get everything put together, and then it doesn't work well. That being said, what I do is I just go ahead and I take some pliers. I'm gonna make basically an X with that eyelet, so I'm gonna pinch one side and then go uh, vertically or horizontally the opposite direction, making an X or a cross. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers and work it back and forth and pop that eyelet out. Um, just basically making sure that uh, I get it as clean as possible once again because sometimes it can kind of mar that kydex. So what I'll usually do is then I'll take that burnishing tool again that I have on my drill. I'll burnish it back out. I'll take the wooden dowel and I'll clean it back up just to make sure that there's, once again, no ex excess debris, any issues that I'm going to run into with that. So yeah, definitely embarrassing, but it's something that you're probably going to encounter. Don't stress out. It's super easy to fix. Um, like I said, and I was using, I'm using this for myself. If it was a, a client, I would probably change it or uh, make a new one for them just to make sure everything's looking good. So as you can see, it fits pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's got that nice little Kydex click that you're uh, used to hearing. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and now attach some shot cord or elastic cord to this um, ax and sheath. I found working in the woods, a lot of times, I don't care if it's leather, Kydex, whatever it is, the woods will take things from you. Um, so what I do is I go ahead and I make sure that I have an extra type of retention onto my sheets. Um, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to go ahead and carry an axe around without a sheet. That's definitely dangerous. I've had it happen. I've had to wrap it up before just to make sure that I didn't cut myself or anything like that. As you can see here, what I'm doing now is I'm using no, some uh, sanding blocks here, going down those different grits, making sure that I have a nice smooth polished edge, tapping it, ensuring that everything's out of there. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab a shot cord. I actually got this off of an old uh, uh, mag pouch. So went ahead and just took that off. So when I find that point of retention, I'm just gonna go ahead and start tying it up, making sure that I put some good knots in there because this, once again, it could be that second point of retention. I need to make sure that it's gonna stay on as best as possible. Pretty simple though, throw in some overhand knots, whatever you wanna fix, um, however you wanna do it. I always like to make sure that I burn my ends, ensuring that uh, it doesn't slip out, fray, or anything like that. But burn it for a second, press down with the lighter, and you should be good to go. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that shot cord up when I'm ready to take it off. Pull from the bottom, and then there you go. All in all, I would say this takes me maybe 
maybe about an hour. Um, I'm not going super fast. Uh, this is not something that needs to be technically difficult. It's just something I found that works pretty well. But this is the overall product. Um, this is what I carry with me while I'm out in the field, yes. cutting down trees, getting firewood, um, especially when I'm, I'm instructing students and whatnot. So if you have any questions, please let me know uh, down below in the comments. It's, once again, it's a simple thing to do. Um, pretty easy, guys. I've been doing it for over a year now. Like I said in the beginning, you're gonna make mistakes, but it's fun, it's easy, um, doesn't cost that much, and you can find a lot of benefits and resources to Kydex and Kydex Sheets. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please uh, give a like down below.